Hello, my name is Xin Bingge. I'll talk about a book I wrote. It's an open access, editable, and multimedia aided physical chemistry textbook. I wrote this book for my students at Central Washington University. It's open access. You may download this book from this website. If you click this icon, you will be able to download all 25 chapters, plus the table of contents and appendices in a zip file. Not only it's a free book, it comes with free solutions manual. So for every single homework problem, I provided the solution. The book is editable. So if you are a PCAM instructor, please feel free to modify this book before using it. The book is multimedia aided. I embedded some videos and animations in the book. For example, I made hydrogen gas at home and asked students in this reaction, which chemical species is the electron donor? Some students would say it's hydroxide, some others, well, noticed that I added sodium chloride in the water. So they say it's chloride. We're gonna see chlorine gas. But in the end, after they see the video, they will have to rethink the whole chemical process. Now let's talk about the structure of this book. There are four parts, thermodynamics, chemical kinetics, quantum chemistry, and statistical thermodynamics. In many other PCAM textbooks, usually chemical kinetics is the last part of the book. In my book, I combine these two together. We teach thermodynamics right before chemical kinetics, only because of the strong connection between these two parts. There are a total of 25 chapters in the book, 10 chapters on thermodynamics, three chapters on chemical kinetics, 10 chapters on quantum chemistry, and then the last two chapters on statistical thermodynamics. There are a BA in chemistry degree at Central Washington University. So I like those students to study thermodynamics and hopefully some chemical kinetics. We also have BS biochemistry and BS chemistry. For BS biochemistry students, I hope that at least they'll see some enzyme kinetics and some kinetics of drug metabolism. That's why I put this chemical kinetics right after thermodynamics instead of at the end of the book. For BS chemistry, they learn everything, including statistical thermodynamics, which is quite math intensive. Now let's look at the 10 chapters in thermodynamics. I go from fundamentals to thermodynamic properties of functions, and then followed by the applications. So what are the fundamentals? Of course, the laws of thermodynamics. And then we move on to thermodynamic functions of properties. For example, heat, work, internal energy, enthalpy, entropy, free energies, and then finally, chemical potential. I use chemical potential to connect internal energy, enthalpy, Helmholtz energy, and Gibbs energy. What about the applications? We talk about chemical equilibrium and physical equilibrium. We talk about non-electrolyzed solutions and electrolyzed solutions. And finally, we talk about electrochemical reactions. In part two, chemical kinetics, we have only three chapters. The first one is the kinetic theory of gases. The second one is about elementary reactions. Uh, in this chapter, we can see the connection between kinetics and thermodynamics. For example, over here, Equilibrium constant is a concept in thermodynamics. And then over here, the forward reaction rate constant divided by the reverse reaction rate constant, that's a concept in kinetics. And also, if you look at the Irene equation, K is KVT over H times, actually over here, this is a very special equilibrium constant between the transition state and the reactants. The last chapter consists of several complex mechanisms. So I introduce the parallel and the sequential mechanism first. 
uh, they are relatively easy. And then I introduce steady state approximation and pre-equilibrium uh, approximation. This is to uh, help students tackle more complex mechanisms. For example, you need molecular reactions, enzyme kinetics, surface chemistry, and radical polymerization. And in each of these four very complex mechanisms, we also see, well, some thermodynamics. For example, in the unimolecular reactions, we have equilibrium between the reactant and the activated reactant. In enzyme kin uh, kinetics, we see also equilibrium between enzyme plus substrate and the complex. In the surface chemistry, we have equilibrium between the gas species and the absorbed species. In radical polymerization, we have equilibrium between monomers and the chain, chain radicals. In quantum chemistry, there are also 10 chapters. Uh, it, there are two subcategories. Uh, the first subcategory is just physics. The second one is chemistry. Uh, in the first subcategory, we have the fundamentals first, the six quantum mechanical postulates, followed by quantum translation, rotation, and vibration. And then the combination of rotation and vibration of molecules. Uh, we neglect the translation of the molecules because the translational and the spacing is negligible. And then we do chemistry. We start from atoms. There's two chapters about hydrogen atoms and all other atoms. And then molecules. We introduce two different molecular orbital theory, uh, the symmetry adapted versus localized MO, followed by molecular spectra. And finally, we do some computational chemistry. The fourth part is statistical thermodynamics, which is quite math intensive. First, we introduce some probability theory and the statistics. Those are the fundamentals. And then we move on to statistical thermodynamics. First, we introduce the concept of particle function Q, and then we express internal energy, heat capacity, entropy, Helmholtz energy, Gibbs energy, and enthalpy in terms of this Q. And finally, we get back to thermodynamics. We talk about chemical equilibrium and also some kinetics at the end of the book. What's special about this book? There are four uh, quite special features, uh, sequence, symmetry, synergy, and support. First, the sequence. Again, in many other PCAM textbooks, kinetics is the last part of the book, but uh, in this book, uh, we study thermodynamics followed by kinetics, and then quantum chemistry, and then statistical thermodynamics. Multiple reasons. Again, one reason is thermodynamics and kinetics are strongly connected. And another reason, which is just more practical, statistical thermodynamics is quite math intensive. So some BA students or BS biochemistry students may not need to take this um, this part, the statistical thermodynamics. Uh, this is mostly for students who are strongly interested in a academic career. And also, if you look at every single part, we go from the fundamentals to the basics to the applications. For example, uh, in quantum chemistry, we look at the six quantum mechanical postulates as the fundamentals. And then we look at the simple quantum translation rotation, and vibration as the basics. And then we move on to atoms and molecules as applications. Now let's look at the problems. So we have example problems in the chapters followed by similar homework problems with hints and solutions. And, and then we can simply select those homework problems. With minor modifications, they become exam problems. The second feature of the book is its symmetry. For example, I included this wheel of thermodynamics in the book with U, H, G, and A. Internal energy, enthalpy Gibbs energy, and Helmholtz energy. And then followed by, look at this eight equations. Those eight equations surrounding the wheel connect all these four thermodynamic functions together. I did put this mu in the center because I use chemical potential to connect U, H, G, and A. 
So when I introduce the concept of chemical potential, I think as other instructors, uh, I introduce this mu in terms of G right here, uh, because this is the UPAC definition. But don't forget that H is simply G plus TS, and U is simply H minus PV, and A is simply U minus TS. And also A is simply G minus PV. So if we go from this UPAC definition of chemical potential, we can get three other similar equations. And we can look at these equations to determine the criterion for spontaneity. And surprisingly, it's the same. It's just this, the sum of mu i d and i is always less than zero. And so in many PCAM textbooks, it states that at constant temperature and pressure condition. So dt is zero, dp is zero. Well, the criteria is dg must be negative. Well, if you look at this equation, if temperature and pressure are constant, dg is negative, then, well, that simply means the sum of mu i d and i is negative. Similarly, if the condition is constant temperature and volume, we say the criteria is either dA should be negative, or this sum of mu i d and i should be negative. Another example about symmetry. In statistical thermodynamics, it's very mass intensive, a lot of derivations, a lot of equations, but again, I use this wheel of uh, thermodynamics to simplify all those concepts and connections. You can see the derivations and the final expressions of U, H, A, and G in the book. So right here, I only show you the expressions. For example, U is simply NRT times how this L and Q depends on L and T, and A is NRT times negative L and Q. The third feature is synergy. So uh, if we look at chemical kinetics, uh, again, there's a lot of derivations in the collisional frequency. Uh, for example, if we try to derive the collisional frequency between two species, uh, inside a unit volume, we can get this expression. Uh, this V is the relative speed. Uh, pi d squared is the collisional cross-sectional area, and then multiply by the number density of x and the number density of y. The number density is proportional to the concentration. It's just the concentration times the f gyro constant. So this is the first chapter of kinetics, and I relay this to the bimolecular reaction rate. Over here, you can see this rate is proportional to this collisional frequency, and eventually it's proportional to the concentration of X and Y. So we go from here to here, we go from collisional theory of gas particles to the elementary uh, reactions. Uh, specifically, this is a typical second order chemical reaction. One more example about synergy. So we all learned this Heisenberg uncertainty principle in first year chemistry. And then in this quantum chemistry, I connect this quantum translation, two dimensional rotation, and the uncertainty of energy together. So if you look at these three expressions, the momentum is negative ih for d over dx, while this angular momentum is negative ih for d over d theta, and the Hamiltonian is uh, equal to ih for d over dt. So from this, we can easily get uh, these three commutators, and you can see the value of these three commutators are exactly the same, ih bar, and then we obtain a Heisenberg uncertainty principle, and then two similar ones. All three are connected, and uh, learning one helps students uh, better understand the other two. The last feature is the student support. Uh, there are about 500 well-designed homework problems with hints and solutions. And again, I often use this homework problems in the exam, so students are highly motivated working on their homework problems. There are lecture videos on YouTube. There are problem-based tutorial videos on YouTube as well. Uh, we also have detailed appendices. For example, the very tedious three-dimensional Laplacian derivation going from the Cartesian coordinates 
to the polar coordinates. I cannot put this uh, in the main body of the book, so I put it in the appendix. Uh, we have uh, four major additions. I got edition 1.0 back in 2021. I plan to roll out edition 2, 3, and 4 in 2024, 27, and 30. I think of 30, I will try to write an open access, editable, and multimedia-aided general chemistry textbook. Uh, over here, one example of the detailed uh, appendix on strict three-dimensional Laplacian derivation from the Cartesian coordinates to the polar coordinates. So over here, we have the second derivative of a function with respect to x. I just showed the students that we can expand it, we can do some conversion, and after some tedious derivation, they'll be able to get this expression in polar coordinates, and they can do the same for y and see. I would like to uh, thank Professor Wei Khan at Oregon State University, Professor Arthur Halpern at Indiana State University for reviewing the book, for their uh, suggestions and comments. And I also would like to uh, thank uh, a few journals, editors and reviewers, Journal of Chemical uh, Education, ACS Omega and uh, the Chemical Educator. Uh, they helped me to improve uh, the publications about teaching uh, some uh, physical chemistry topics. Uh, again, feel free to use my PCAM test book. Feel free to modify it as you see fit before using it. Use it any way you want, uh, except for commercial reasons. And also you can get the book and videos from this website. Uh, this is my first name, hyphen, my last name, dot com. And you can also scan the QR code. Let me know what you think, please. Thank you.